and it says here the races of Europe a sociological study Lowell Institute lectures by William C Ripley PhD assistant professor of sociology Massachusetts Institute of Technology that's MIT lecturer on anthropology at Columbia University in the city of New York all right can we give him a little credit it was like, who do you mean? But that's the white man. That's the white man. Well, the white man is letting you know. The white man is letting you know that Europe was all swarthy. A new phase of the matter was presented by Broca's celebrated researchers concerning the physical characteristics of the French people in the decade following 1860, especially those among the peasants in Brittany. Here were the only Celtic-speaking people on the continent, and they were of a brunette and short race. Then in 1865 came the monumental work of Davis internment. The Crania Britannia with added proof that a large part of the Celtic speaking population of the British Isles, particularly the Welsh, were equally short and of a dark complexion. Short and dark. Broca and Beto, among anthropologists, at once grasped the situation. They perceived the inconvenience attendant upon the use of the term. Nevertheless, the advocates of the old view of tall blonde Celts still counted eminent authority among their number such as von Baer with his and ruf all right again another source that in us know right dark complexion europeans as early as 1868 durand de gross noted that in Aveyron, one of the southern departments lying along the borders of mountainous area the populations of the region thereabout were strongly differentiated on the colorless plains the people were taller of light complexion with blue or grayish blue eyes and having fine teeth in the upland areas of the granitic formation the people were stunned dark in complexion with very poor teeth the hypothesis of an iberian substratum of population in britain proved that long before the advent of the saxons several distinct physical types coexisted in roman britain one of these he tells us in the 11th chapter of his agricola was the caledonian red-haired and tall there that of the Siluris in southern Wales with a dark complexion and curly hair. He also notes the similarity in appearance between the southern Britons and the Gauls and suggests a Germanic origin for the Caledonians and Iberian ones for the Welsh and a Gallic one for the English. This is possibly all that he said upon the subject, never having been in the con country. Then Jornandes, an early Italian commentator, added, fuel to the flame by amending Tacitus' words concerning the Siluris of Wales, giving them not only dark complexion but black curly hair. Such were the humble beginnings of the Iberian hypothesis, notwithstanding which is which it has passed current for generations as it is founded upon the broadest array of facts. What if we should conclude that the assumption is correct in the light of modern research? All right, in the light of modern research. One more facial type needs to be mentioned. It is come uh, mon monist in Kent and in the Isle of Wit. It is generally ascribed to Jutish ancestry from Jutland. That's Jutish from Jutland, Dan Denmark. Our two upper portraits of page 316 represent this adequately enough. These people are darkish in complexion. The principal peculiarity in their convexity of profile from chin to forehead. The lips are rather thick. The nose is difficult to describe, unless we can agree to call it Jewish. What explanation can be offered for the curio curiously, curiously sorry, antitonic population which seems to fringe the coast of Norway, especially centering in the southwest? It is unattainable hypothesis, as in fact Nielsen found it is to ascribe this to the persistence of a substratum of lapse from the Stone Age. These people, to be sure, are characterized by all traits noted in the southwest of Norway. And this, moreover, to an extraordinary degree, they're almost dwarfed in stature. They are dark haired and swarthy, all right, swarthy. And as our two portals illustrate, they are broad headed to an extreme. Our second physical type of the Russian Aborigines, all right, now we're talking about the Russian, is the polar extreme from this long headed red blonde one. We may follow it in our map of the black tints indicating a prevalent broad. Headiness. This is best exemplified at the two extremes of Russia in the lap of the Northwest and the Kalmuk and Kurskek hordes of the Caspian steeps. The Samoyeds are merely a continuation of the lap type towards Asia along the Arctic. These people correspond closely to what we popularly regard as Mongolian. All right, so listen up. The Mongolians, they are all what? 
all dark or black haired with swarthy skins. Right, the Aborigines, the Russians, because the Mongolians are really Russians. They're Russian Aborigines. Genghis Khan's real name is Georgi Danilovich. He was Russian. These hordes, these Mongolian hordes with these golden hordes, these Russian armies that were invading. All right, and this guy Georgi or Genghis united these Russian armies or these kingdoms, what they call it, the story they call it. But these Mongolians, even Genghis Khan was very swarthy, very dark skinned. We are strengthened in this assumption that the earliest Europeans were not only long headed, but also dark complexioned by various points in our inquiry thus far. We have proved the prehistoric antiquity of the living cro magnet type in southwestern France, and we saw that among these peasants, the prevalence of black hair and eyes is very striking. In comparing types in the British Isles, we saw that everything tended to show that the brunette populations of Wales, Ireland, and Scotland constituted the most primitive stratum of population in Britain. Furthermore, in that curious spot in Gard Fagnana, where a survival of the ancient Ligurian population of northern Italy is indicated, there are also are the people characteristically dark. Judged therefore either in light of general principles or of local details, it would seem as if this earliest race of Europe must have been very dark. It was Mediterranean in its pigmental affinities and not Scandinavian. All right, and continues says, on the islands of the Shetlands, in the Orkneys and Hebrides, the case was much the same. Here, the Aborigines were often entirely replaced by purely Scandinavian population. Such a family with strongly accentuated Norwegian peculiarities as depicted on this page. Its contrast with the Aboriginal dark population. In contrast, again, with the Aboriginal dark population. The old black breed needs no comment the old black breed the aboriginal dark population all right it says here fitzner fitzner observed the same phenomenon in al sas whereas in britain a dark population has been overrun by a tectonic one so striking was the contrast here that the even ascribes it to real sexual peculiarity one detail of our map confirms us in this opinion that a primitive dark population in these islands now mainly of Celtic speech has been overlaid by a lighter one. Notice the strongly marked island of brunettes just north of London. Two counties, Herefordshire and Buckinghamshire, are as dark as Wales and others north of them are nearly as unique. All right, says so the three main physical types in Scotland are well represented by our portraits at page 324. The upper pair, raw boned and red headed, is familiar enough, as also the equally tall, heavily built but dark type illustrated in our moray and inverness subjects. The middle pair, the little dark man, are representative of probably the oldest element of all in Scotland. I right, who? The little dark man in Scotland. This corresponds closely to Salures of Wales or the small dark firk bulks west of Shannon in Ireland. The curly hair shown in both our examples is, I am informed by Dr. Beto, very common among men of this type. All right, so curly little dark men. The presence among the Russian people themselves of a medium stature, dark complexioned and broad headed majority is acknowledged by all that this represents the original Slavic stock. Slavic was dark complexion talking about slavs slaves started with white no you gotta understand there was also dark-skinned slavs originally the original slavics were dark complexion all right it's certainly the most logical direct inference it is in the opinion tacitly at least accepted by most of the english writers all right that's what is accepted by almost all english writers all right Direct evidence as to the former coloration of the Slavs is very scanty. The testimony of the old travelers like Ibrahim Im Jakub as to the black hair and the beards of the Czechs contrasted with the Saxons deduced by Dr. Beto in favor of a dark Slavic origin is contested by Niederli. The English Jews seem to also to be slightly lighter than their continental brethren, even despite their presumably greater portion of Sephardim who are supposed to be peculiarly dark, all right? Because the Sephardi Jews of Spain and Portugal, they are dark complexion people. As to the relative red blondness of Oriental Jews, the early observation of Dr. Beto and those of Lager Hams, as to the blue eyes and red brown hair of the Druzes of Lebanon, while substantiated by some observers, is con 
introverted by Jacobs and others, perhaps as Dr. Beto suggests, a cross with the blonde Amorites, hmm, may count for the phenomenon. At all events, the living Semites are dark enough in type, and all evidence of the sacred books bears out the same theory of an original dark type. Thus, black and hair are commonly synonymous in the early Semitic languages. All right. It says, origin of the Anglo-Saxon race, a study of the settlement of England and the tribal origin of the old English people by the late Thomas William Shore, author of a history of Hampshire, etc., honorary secretary London and Middlesex Archaeological Society, honorary organizing secretary of the Hampshire uh, Field Club and Archaeological Society, edited by his sons, T.W. Shore and L.E. Shore. All right, this is from 1906. We're all the way in chapter six. It says, Rugens, Wens, and tribal Slavonic settlers. Now, it says here that the name Wens was given by the old Teutonic nations of Germany to those Slavonic tribes who were located in the countries east of the Elbe and south of the Baltic Sea. It is in the same as the older name used by Plotomy who says that the Wend Nedai are established along the whole of Wendish Gulf. Tacitus also mentions the Venedi. There can therefore be no doubt that these people were seated on the coast of Mecklenburg and Pomerania before the time of the Anglo-Saxon settlement, that there were some differences in race between the Wends of various tribes is probable from the existence of such large tribes among them as the Wiltsi and the Obodriti who in time of Charlemagne formed opposite alliances, the former with the Saxons, the latter with the Franks. The Wends who still exist in Lower Saxony are of a dark complexion. They are of a dark complexion and are the same stock as the Sorbs or Serbs of Serbia. They are Slavonic, but many tribes of Slavonic descent are fair in complexion. So many of them are light-skinned, Procopius tells us that those Vandals who were allies of the ancient gods were remarkable for their tall stature, pale complexion, and blonde hair. It is therefore by no means improbable that the ancient Slavic uh, tribes of the Baltic coast were distinguished by differences in complexion. So they're letting you know that there was different types of Slavic people. There was light-skinned Slavics and dark complexion. Must be more original. The same migratory movement in lesser degree appears to have extended even into England, bringing into our country some Slavonic settlers, probably in alliance with Saxons, Angles, Goths, and other tribes, and some later on in alliance with Danes. The existence of separate large tribes among the Wends is probable evidence of racial differences, and the alternative names they had are probably those by which they are, were known to themselves and to their neighbors, the remnant at the present time of the dark complexion went of Saxony who called themselves Sorbs. All right, shows that there must have been some old Wendish tribe of similar complexion from which they are descended as the country anciently occupied by the Wiltsi included Brandenburg and the district around Berlin. It joined the limits of ancient Saxony on the west. There is evidence arising from the survivals. All right, so it says here chapter 7 in the same book our darker forefathers. All right. One of the facts concerning the color of the hair and eyes of the people in different countries of England at the present time brought to light by scientific observations is that there is a higher percentage of people of mixed brown type living in Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Wiltshire, and Dorset than in most other counties, except those in Cornwall and on the old Celtic borders. The inhabitants of these countries are the darkest. This is usually explained on the supposition that in the process of the Saxon settlement of British population was allowed to remain in these parts of England, which in the course of centuries became mixed with the inhabitants of Anglo-Saxon descent, and consequently the present population is more marked than those of pure descent by brown, hazel, or black eyes with brown, chestnut, dark brown, or black hair. The counties of Hertzford and Buckingham have people as dark as Wales. All investigation goes to show that this brunette outcrop is a reality. Beto found that the area in which there is a larger percentage of brown people in England extends from the River Lee to the Warwickshire Avon. In dealing with the circumstances of the settlement, these ethnological facts must receive consideration. All right. The survival of British population is a possible explanation and the one which appears to be the most natural, 
as there are some difficulties in this conclusion, the question arises, is there any other way in which the origin of these mixed brown people, surrounded by others of a somewhat fairer complexion, can be explained? An alternative explanation is that people of darker race may have come with the Anglis, Saxons, or Danes, and have settled largely in these parts of the country. There is circumstantial evidence that people of brown or dark complexion did come into England during the time of both the Saxon and the Danish settlements, and this may now be summarized. All right, so it says that this consideration of the probable origin of the great proportion of brunettes in two of the South Midland counties of England leads us to that of color names as surnames and place names, which may probably have been derived from the original settlers. For example, there is in the common name Brown, all right, Brown. This has been derived from the Anglo-Saxon Brun, all right, Brun. So remember I what I showed that Bruin in Dutch, Bruin is black, Bruin. So like the hockey team in Boston, the Boston Bruins was basically talking about people of color or the black Bostons, basically Bostonians, you know, the Bruins, the Boston Bruins. All right, Bruin. Bruin is brown or brown complexion people. Hockey was invented by American Indians. They were talking about American Indians who are brown complexion. Again, signifying brown. It is not reasonable to doubt that when our forefathers called a man Brun or brown, they gave him this name as a descriptive of his brown complexion. This probability that the brunettes were common is supported by the frequent references to persons named Brun and Anglo-Saxon literature. Brun was a name not confined to England in the Anglo-Saxon and later periods. On the contrary, we find that it was a common name in ancient Germany. The typical place name Bruninga Feld occurs in a charter of Etelstan dated AD 938 and local Q Bruninga Feld de Situr. Brunsham Hans is mentioned in a charter of Edward the Elder about AD 900. So it says, as regards the ancient brown race or races of North Europe, there can be no doubt of their existence in the southeast of Norway and in the east of Frisland. There can be no doubt about the important influence which the old Wendish race has had in the northeastern parts of Germany and transmitting to their descendants a more brunette complexion than prevails among the people of Hanover, Holstein, and West Westphalia of more pure Teutonic descent. We cannot reasonably doubt that in view of such survival of brown people as we find at the present time in the provinces of North Holland, Drenthe, and Overijssel, which formed the hint hinterland of the ancient Frisian country, numerous brunettes must have come into the England among the Frisians. It says the consideration of the evidence that people of brunette complexions were among the Anglo-Saxon settlers in England leads on to that of people of a still darker hue, the dark black or brown black settlers. Probably there must have been some of these among the Anglo-Saxons, for we meet with the personal names black men, black men, Blakeman, Blackaman, Blackasunu, Blacka, and Blatchiman or Blachman in various documents of the period all right blacka was an elf dormant of Lindsay who was converted by paulinus blackman was the son of Elric El eldrick a descendant of ida ancestor of elhred king of bernicia and so on the same kind of evidence is met with among the oldest place names blackamnerberg is mentioned in anglo-saxon charter blackman stone was the name of a place in dorset and Blackenman Stone, that of a place in Kent, Blackenshell. There's another old word used by the Anglo-Saxons to denote black or brown black. The word swart. All right, we know that. The swarty, right? Swart. The personal name Suart or Suart may have been derived from this word. They're saying steward, right? The stewards. Suart. Suart. Swart. Which means black. So this word may be derived from that and may have originally denoted people of a dark brown or black complexion. Some names of this kind are mentioned in the Doomsday Record of Buckinghamshire and Lincolnshire. These may be of Scandinavian origin. For the Ikinami or nickname Swarti is found in the Northern Sagas. Havden the Black was the name of King of Norway who died in 863. The so-called black men of the Anglo-Saxon period probably included some of the darker 
Wendish people among them, immigrants or descendants of people of the same race as the ancestors of the Sorbs of Lausatia. All right. So I know I'm reading and I hope people's understanding, but let us know that there was black Anglo-Saxons. So like people try to say like Benjamin F. Franklin earlier saying, oh, the only white people are the Anglo-Saxons. Well, some of them were, but not all of them were. All right. Borders of, it says, and the ancestors of the source of Lo Satya on the borders of Saxony and Prussia at the present day, some of the darker winds may well have been among the black Vikings. All right. Black what? The black Vikings referred to in the Irish annals. Black Vikings. All right. Isn't this really Vikings? Because if we break down the letters, those letters, and we separate the V and the I, it becomes six kings. We put a space in between those and we look at it like Roman numeral, the six kings, the Vikings, the six kings. Again, the black Vikings referred to in the Irish annals as well as in those of Wales. It may have been the people who have left the Anglo-Saxon name Black Man or Berkey, which occurs in one of the charters. Black and Manstone on the Kentish coast and Black and Manstone on the Dorset coast. As late as time of the Doomsday Survey, we meet with records of people apparently named after their dark complexions. In Buckinghamshire, Black Blakeshimon, Swartinus, Swartinus, the Swartiness, right? And others are mentioned in Sussex one named Black in Suffolk, Black in Manus, and Swarthy Kungus, and others at Lincoln. The invasion, the invasion of the coast of the British Isles by the Vikings of a dark or black complexion rests on historical evidence, which is too circumstantial to admit of doubt. All right. All right. This scholar from all these historical societies is letting you know black vikings right dark-skinned vikings there's too much historical evidence which is too circumstantial to admit of doubt all right he's already letting you know it's too much evidence but 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 what happened throughout history what did they teach us all the circumstantial evidence that he knew about this is from the 1800s right so why didn't they teach us that they were black vikings why did they always show us white vikings all right. In the Irish annals, the Black Vikings are called Dub Genti or Black Gentiles. These Black Gentiles on some occasions fought against other plunderers of the Irish coast known as the Fair Gentiles, who can hardly have been others than the Fair Danes or Northern Northmen. During the year 851, the Black Gentiles came to Athcliath, Dublin, example Dublin. So that's the name, Dublin. In 852, we are told that eight ships of the Finn Genti arrived, we're talking about Black Vikings, and fought against the Dub Genti for three days, and that the Dub Genti were victorious. The Black Vikings appear at this time to have had a settlement in or close to Dublin, and during the 9th century were much in evidence on the Irish coast. In 877, a great battle was fought at Loch Cuan between them and the Fair Gentiles, in which Alban, chief of the Black Gentiles, fell. He may well have been a chieftain of the race of the northern sorbs of the Mecklenburg coast. There is still another way in which men of black hair or complexions may have come into England. As draws among the Norse invaders in his translation of Orosius, King Alfred inserts the account which uh, Oder the Norse mariner gave him of the tribune in Skings either down whalebone and ropes made from whale and seal skinks which the north northern Finns now called laps paid to the northmen their descendants are amongst the darkest people of europe and as they were thralls some of them may have accompanied their lords the danes and norse having the general race characteristics of tall fair men must have been sharply distinguished in appearance from vikings such as those of john Borg for many of these were probably of a dark complexion. There's an interesting record of the descent of a dark sea rovers of the coast of North Wales in the annals of Cambry under the year 987, which tells us that Gothric, son of Harold, with black men, devastated Anglesey and captured 2,000 men. Another entry in the same record tells us that Meridut redeemed the captives from the black men. This account in the in the from the observances of their forefathers. Okay, so this is another screen. So it says, So they slew both the black and fair Hawalt, who
whose names in subsequent Christian time were and still are held in high honor in Westphalia. It is a touching story and one that tells us more than the devotion inspired by Christian zeal to risk their lives, which these missionaries showed for the conversion of men of their own race. For as their names indicate, they bore in their different complexions evidence of the existence of the fair and the dark people amongst the Anglo-Saxon stock. All right, both colors, complexions. Weringa or Weringe is Hertfordshire, the probable connection of the Wends, some tribes of whom which are the Sorbs are known to have been dark, with parts of the Germany near Brunswick and with parts of Hertz and Bucks is shown by these names. Doomsday Book tells us whose Carls in Buckinghamshire and a people who bore such names as Swarting, Suart or Suan, Suart and Suart among its land holders. And it is difficult to avoid the conclusion that such names refer to people of dark complexions. All right. If they got last names like Seward, Stewart, Seward, all right, it's hard to avoid that they have dark complexions. Among the laments of Lincoln, a very Danish town, there were also apparently some so-called Danes of a dark complexion. All right. Who's the Danes? In Hampshire, however, we do not meet with general blunt type. Of the New Forest District, McIntosh says, the New Forest is inhabited by a mixture of races which almost defy classification. The complexion in general being dark, all right, in general being what? Dark. And this prevalence of dark complexion people among the inhabitants of the New Forest District is still apparent. It is in parts of Wiltshire and Dorset. The same ethnological observer, McIntosh, also says, in the middle and north Hampshire, the people in general belong to a dark complexion race. I have heard the opinion expressed that they are Wends, or a Belgic tribe of Wendish extraction. The present writer is not able to regard the dark complexion type as being largely race. The latter Celts are not characterized by this head form. The survival among living people here and there of representatives of the broad headed type is an interesting ethnological circumstance. As might be expected, it is chiefly in the most mountainous part of England, in the remote parts of Cumberland that traces of this race may still be met with. The type is according to Bedell and Ripley, marked by being above the average in height, generally dark in complexion, the head broad and short, the face strongly developed at the cheekbones, grown or beetle-browed, the development of the bow ridges being especially noticeable in contrast with the smooth, almost feminine softness of the Saxon forehead. And right here we have uh, Riddles of Prehistoric Times by James H. Anderson. And he says the bass are of a middle size, compactly built, robust, and agile of a darker complexion than the Spaniards. So the Spaniards are dark, remember. So the bass are even darker. Right? The bass, the original bass. Their language has a resemblance to the Finnic, as well as to some of the languages of the red men of the Pacific coast, and to the Gallic in Ireland and Brittany. An ice age probably drove them south. Some few probably survived as cave dwellers but the larger part perished. Says here, the first inhabitants of Southern Europe, Northern Africa, Arabia, France, and the British islands were a race of small men who did not average in height more than about four to five feet, four feet, five inches. They were of slight build with dark complexion. They were cave dwellers, em emanation from Lemuria, he says, all right, Lemuria. So, a description of the Western Islands of Scotland containing a full account of their situation. Uh, let me see. Extent, soils, product, Harbors Bay. All right, and it keeps going. So this is from uh, M, uh, Martin Martin, I believe his name is. Yeah, and from 1716. All right, this book is from 1716. You can find it on archive.org. <laughs> says the inhabitants of this ISO are generally well proportioned. And their complexion is for most part black. They are not obliged to art in forming their bodies for nature never fails to act her part bountifully to them. And perhaps there is no part of the habitable globe where so few bodily imperfections are to be seen, nor any children that go more early. I have observed several of them walk alone before they were 10 months old. They are bathed all over every morning and evening some in cold, some in warm water, but the latter is most commonly used and they wear nothing straight about them. 
all right they're talking about inhabitants of scotland all right of most part black and again so in the same book a description of the western islands of scotland and we're talking about the Isle of Aran or the island of Aran. It says the inhabitants of this Isle are well proportioned, generally brown, and some of black complexion. They enjoy a good state of health and have a genius for all callings or, or employ. All right, brown or black complexion. And the Isle of Gige says the inhabitants are all Protestants. All right, Protestants. Remember that. Protestant. I've been telling tell you guys when I say Protestants, because a lot of the times I'll be like, oh, we had a shipload of Protestants come from Ireland or whatever. And we just say, oh, a bunch of white people, right? That's what we're all assuming. And that's what I'm trying to help break that spell. The inhabitants are all Protestants and speak the Irish tongue generally, there being but a few that speak English. They are grave and res reserved in their conversation they are accustomed not to bury on friday they are fair or brown in complexion and use the same habit diet that is made use of the adjacent continent isos all right it says about a league further of the south all right so this is about the island of judah it almost sounds like the island of judah just replace the r with a d judah judah says the natives here are very well proportioned being generally black of complexion and free from bodily imperfections they speak the irish language and wear the plaid the plaid bonnet as other islanders all right the plaid all right they they made that up you know that's <laughs> that plaid clothing <laughs> we